Welcome to Lesson 13, The Law of Signs. The Law of Signs is a biggie. It's a biggie biggie. When it comes to biggies, it's one of the biggiest. Uh, I use it a lot, that's what I'm trying to say. And the situation that it applies to most is when you have a triangle that is not a right triangle. So for most of this um, trig part of our course, we've been playing with right triangles, of course. Last time we saw how do you find the sine of an obtuse angle, but now it's like, okay, how do you play with a triangle that has an obtuse angle, like 100 degrees right here? And the thing you have to emphasize, the thing you have to really realize, we got the 6, we got the 11, we want the x, how about Pythagorean theorem? No, you're not going to use Pythagorean theorem. Why not? Because Pythagorean theorem is for right triangles only, and that is not a right triangle, which means you cannot use Pythagorean theorem. If you go 6 squared plus 11 squared and take the square root, you're going to get the wrong answer. It's going to be so wrong, and then I'm going to try to erase it and everything. Well, okay, no Sokotoa. How about, or excuse me, no Pythag. How about Sokotoa? Can't we use Sokotoa? It's like, here's my 30. Wouldn't that be sort of like the opposite? And that, okay, that's not a hypotenuse, right? That's not a hypotenuse. A hypotenuse has to come across from a 90 degree, and that's not a 90 degree. It's not a hypotenuse. So we're not going to Sokotoa either. No, Sokotoa. So you can't use all of our standard tricks. You can't use Pythag. You can't use Sokotoa. You got to use something else. And so that something else that I'm talking about today, of course, is called the Law of Signs. And I'll show you where the Law of Signs comes from in the very last example of the course. But for now, let's just get a hang of how it works, how to write it and how it works. It goes like this. Here's how it works. What you do is you match up an angle with its opposite side. Using opposite in a generic sense. I don't mean the opposite side. I mean, you know, from the 30 degrees you can come across and there, that's a 6. So you match it up and then you write this. The sine, it's called the law of sines because you have to do the sine. The sine of 30 degrees over 6. Cool, right? Sine of 30 degrees over 6. Now what we're going to do is we're going to set up a little proportion. And what you do is you do the same thing. Match up an angle with a side. So I'm going to say the sine of 100 degrees over x. Notice it's a proportion, and there's only one thing we don't know. So we're able to crisscross our applesauce or whatever the heck they say these days and solve that thing. So this is the greatest thing in the world. So on my calculator, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go 6 times the sine of 100 degrees, and then I'm going to divide it by the sine of 30 degrees, and then I'm going to hit my equals. And where did I put my calculator? Oh, come on, man. It's way back here. Okay, now it's way up here. Here we go. So 6 times the sine of 100, close my parentheses, hit the equal sign. I like to hit the equal sign a lot. It's an old habit. So I'm looking at a 5.9 at the moment. And then divide by the sine of 30, boink. And here's our answer right here. It's 11 point, eh, I guess I'll go with three sig figs, 11.8, 11.8 PS. In fact, let's make a better PS than that. PS. If you had tried Pythag, you would have gone 6 squared plus 11 squared. You would have added them up. You would have taken the square root. Let's just see what that is. So I'm doing that on my calculator now. <laughs> what? Let's try that again. So, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. there we go. So this is telling me like 12.5. That's not right. It's not that big. It's actually 11.8. I suppose if you had sort of popped this thing upright and gone like this and built yourself a nice right triangle, then this side would be... 12.5. But that's not what we have. We didn't have a right triangle at all, which means we don't do any of that Pythag stuff, okay? So point made. Pythag gives you the wrong answer. <laughs> it's this law of signs that you want to use. 
And here is, what did I just do? And here is the law of sines in all of its glory right there. It's a proportion thing. So again, sine of an angle on top of its opposite side equals sine of an angle on top of its opposite side. And it's the same everywhere. It's the same as the sine of this angle, whatever it is, over the 11. It's the same going all the way around the triangle. It always works. It always works. It's really cool. Let's look at another one. So what do we got here? Well, looks like we got two things to solve for. Now, this x that we want can be matched up with the 50 degrees, right? So I'll, why don't I just write this now? You usually start with the, with the angle and you go over the side. So sine 50 degrees, put that over x. Now that would be the same thing as if I crossed from the 45 to the y, the sine of 45 degrees over the y. So, okay, I can write that. Uh, got a little bit of a problem here because this formula has two unknowns. How are you supposed to solve for both? You can't solve for both. You need something else, right? We need, we need to bring in something else. So the only thing we have, the only other thing we have is to try to use this angle in this side. We got the 26, that's cool, but what's this angle? And luckily, it's not too hard to figure out. Because remember, all angles add to 180 for any triangle in the world. So all we have to do is take the 180, subtract the 50, subtract the 45. What is that, like 85? I think that's 85 degrees, ain't it? Yeah, 85 degrees. And so what I can do is I can say, oh, sine of 85 degrees over 26. Okay. All three of those little ratios are equal. A sine of an angle over the over its opposite side. That ratio is the same no matter which way you cross a triangle. The sine of this sine of this angle over this side is the same as the sine of this angle over this side is the same as the sine of this angle over this side. And now we can start solving. Let's just focus on this part. There's a nice proportion we can use. It'll just solve for y. So I'm going to do the old cross products, right? So you do you do 26 times the sine of 45. I do that first. Close my parentheses, hit the equals button. And then I divide by what's left. Divide by the sine of 85. And I end up with 18.9. We'll call it five. Eighteen point five three six things sounds good. And then we can solve for the x. Similarly, now my preference is to use whoa, not what I wanted. Okay, my preference is to use um, these two things. I don't want to use the eighteen point five in further calculations because the eighteen point five is probably just a little bit off. And you don't want to have things be a little bit off if you don't need to. So you use the information that they gave you. They gave us a 26. And the, we know the 85 is perfect if the 45 and the 50 are perfect. So I'm going to use that instead. So I'm going to go sine of 50 degrees over x is the same as the sine of 85 degrees over 26. Again, the cross product-y thing. You go 26 times the sine of 50, right? You multiply the two numbers that share a diagonal. You do that first. You hit your equals button. And then you divide by the leftover. So divide by the sine of 85. And this is coming out to, well, my calculator says 19.993. If I want to go one decimal place, right, this 9 is forcing me to round this up to a 20.0. And so that's my x. Well, you having fun yet? Maybe I'm going a little fast, but once you get used to this, it will be fast. It's the fastest thing in the world. You just sine of this over this. That's the same as the sine of this over this. That's the same as the sine of this over this. You're setting up proportions. Who doesn't love proportions? And so on. Okay, so what's going on with this one? What's going on with this one? Two examples down. Something like four to go. What do we got here? I guess we're supposed to solve for everything. We're supposed to solve for that and that and that. Um, hmm. Notice that the sine of b over b doesn't doesn't look like a very promising place to start because we don't know the big b, we don't know the little b either. So let's not start with that at all. Let's start with maybe match up things that are known right there. We know both of those. So hey, I can start writing a proportion. The sine of 60 degrees over the 71.5. That is one part of my proportion. Now, 
let's cross the triangle this oops let's cross the triangle this way from the c over to the 52 so the sine of angle c over the 52.0 okay so whenever you set up a proportion and there's only one variable in it you know you can solve for that variable so that's pretty cool so i'm going to start the cross products 52.0 has to multiply the sine of 60 degrees and that will be the same as, I'm going to write it out this time, 71.5 times the sine of this angle C. So if you want to get C alone, the first thing to do is to get the sine of C alone, which means the first thing to do is divide both sides by the 71.5. And if I, so this will cancel. So if I just kind of push buttons so I know what I'm looking at here, 52 sine of 60, close parentheses, hit my equals button. Divide by 71.5, hit my equals button, hit my SD button. I've got 0.6298. Okay, and if I round, it's going to be another 6. Okay. Why am I carrying so many decimal places? Because I'm still in the middle of a calculation. Okay, You don't want to be rounding things off prematurely. That's bad. If you start, if I, if I rounded this to a, well, I've seen people do this, round it to 0.6, and that's egregious. That's horrible. That's frightening. That's enough to make you run screaming. Uh, please don't round things off so much. Even if you go 0 0.63, it's like, okay, it's a little less painful, but you still got a big, sharp object in my foot. It hurts. Uh, don't carry a lot of decimals, will you? Just do it. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> equals the sine of angle C, and... It wasn't so long ago we were doing this kind of thing, right? If you're trying to dig the angle out of the sign, remember what you have to do. You have to do a shift shift sign, right? Um, the official notation is this, right? That's the notation. But, of course, that's what you get when you hit shift sign. If you take a close look at the shift sign, it's got a little yellow or brown or whatever color you've got. It's got a little sign with a minus one. By the way, let me throw this in. I know I've thrown this in somewhere before, but this is not an exponent. Do not treat this like an exponent. It is not an exponent. It's a notation. It stands for inverse. It stands for inverse. It's not an exponent. So anyway, we're taking the shift sign, is what I'm trying to say, of this number to get our angle C. And so our angle C is going to be, here we go. I've still got that nice big decimal in my calculator right now, so all I really have to do is go shift sign and hit the ANS for answer key. Boom. Looks like our angle is rounded to one decimal place. We got 39.0 degrees. By the way, sig figs doesn't work so well for decimals. Um, it's, you're better off just choosing a number of decimal places. So I like maybe one, maybe two decimal places on my angles. So anyway, that's 39.0 degrees. That's angle C. Let's add that to our triangle here. 39.0 C. Okay, cool. Now, Back to solving for everything else. We wanted to also get this and this. Well, how are we supposed to get this and this? If we don't know the capital B and we don't know the sine B, then the sine of B over little b is not going to do us any good. But remember, it's a triangle. And once you've got these two angles, you can just subtract from 180 to get this angle. 180, take away 60. Excuse me, take away 39. Uh, what is that? I want to say that's 81. Did I do that right? What are you doing? What is this? What? 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 Stop. Stop. What are you doing? Stop. Why does this happen? Sheesh. If you breathe on it the wrong way, it's going to do something surprising. Anyway, that's 81 degrees. So now I can use my 81 degrees over little b, right? Crossing the triangle this way. And I can set that equal to either this one or this one. I'm going to go with this one because this is information that we started with. It's more likely to be accurate. It doesn't have as much round off in it. So if I go like this and I do my old cross product kind of thing, I say, okay, 71.5 times the sine of 81, close my parentheses, hit the equals. Now divide by the sine of 60, close my parentheses, hit my equals. And I've got B is about, let's see, how many sig figs? Let's go, yeah. They're giving us one decimal place. Sometimes I like to go one more. So it's 81.54 or so. If you give, if you tell me 81.5, that's fine. I'm not going to say it's wrong. But 81.54.
They gave me three. Sometimes I just go one extra with my work. Okay, so this is still law of science. It's all the same idea. Sine of this angle across its side. Sine of this angle across its side. Maybe, in fact, I really do think you ought to try this one yourself. Try it. This is my challenge to you. All you got to do is solve for that one little angle there. It's just one thing to solve for. That won't take so long. Pause. I think I just said salon pause without trying. Anyway, so you're back, right? What is salon pause? I can't even remember what that is. It's a commercial. That's what I know. Okay, so we want to solve for theta. Notice we can match it up with this side. So that's pretty cool. Sine of theta over 12.70. And then, how convenient is this? We're given this right here, sine of 40 degrees over 8.40. I know what you're asking. You're saying, well, what's so great about this example? This one, so this one's nice. Well, maybe it is nice. Let's just multiply this times this and divide by this. And I'll have the sine of theta equals, and I'm gonna write out the decimal places. Usually I just leave them on my calculator. I don't bother to write them out. But uh, just so we all on the same page here. So 12.7 times the sine of 40, close my parentheses, equals, divide that by 8.4, hit equals. So the decimal I'm getting is 0 0.9718336. Three, or something like this. So again, you want to dig the theta out, so you have to hit the shift sign. And I hit the shift sign of that big decimal there. I can just hit shift sign of answer key. I'm getting this angle, 76 point, eh, call it four degrees. 76.4 degrees. What do you think? You like it? Gotta admit, this uh, setting up proportions thing, it's pretty cool. The sine of this over this is the same as the sine of this over this. It's guaranteed to work every single time. Now, you'll notice I'm slowing down a little bit here. Always know what is before your eyes. So I, I did some math moves, right? Now if you spend your whole life doing math moves, you're gonna be bumming <laughs> because you're gonna make a lot of mistakes. You see that? 76 degrees. Does that look like 76 degrees to you? That's bigger than 90, ain't it? What's going on? Did the law of sines fail us? No, it did not. You have to remember, and this was just one lecture ago. Oh, come on. You have to remember, wait. Remember that Biff's two answer theorem? You have to always keep in mind, whenever you hit the shift button on a trig, there's two answers. Ah, let me make this a little more legible. There's two answers. And the calculator will only give you one of the answers. 76.4 degrees is one of the answers. There's another answer. So you have to remember that with sine, it turned out that triangles that were symmetric across the y-axis, left, right, like this, I mean the sine, oops, the sine of this angle is here. The sine of this angle comes out to be exactly the same thing. This height's the same as this height. This thing's the same as this thing. So the sines must be the same. So this angle and this angle both have the same sine. So this angle is 76.4 degrees. Question is, what's this one? And you can work it out because you can say, well, since it's a reflection, I should really subtract it from 180. And so what I got here is 103.6. That's what this angle really is. It's 103.6 degrees. Let's put a big star. Let's put a big flag. Let's put a big... Surprise-y symbol. Let's just make sure that we remember this. 
fifths to answer theorem, okay? Always look at your triangle, make sure the answer makes sense. That's that's true for any math problem, really. But you've got an answer, cool, make sure it makes sense. Does 76 degrees make sense? No! So you know something's up, and that something is the fifths to answer theorem. Point made? Cool. <laughs> Remember that when you're doing the homework and stuff like that. Okay, two pages down, one page to go. What do we got here? What we got here is one of those head scratcher problems. And I could tell right away that I forgot to give you a piece of information. <laughs> this problem can't be solved. What's H? Well, you can't really solve it. I have to give you another piece of information. So uh, the other piece of information I'm gonna give you is this. Let's give you a length here. Let's call this, I have no idea. Let's call this 614, sure. From here to here is 614. Okay, what's going on with this problem? Well, what's going on is you've got this big, just think of it as a, a hill or a, I don't know how tall it is yet. So maybe it's like a big cliff or something and you wanna measure the height of the cliff. And the problem is you can't just put the measuring tape straight up the cliff because the cliff is not straight. Cliffs don't tend to be straight. They tend to be crooked, right? And they've got a crooked cliff. And then to make things even worse, you get all these boulders down here and stuff like that. Maybe you got a cactus in the way, I don't know. So you get all this stuff in the way. What you would like to do is you would like to measure this height straight up. That's what you want. What, how far is it straight up? But you can't get the measuring tape in there. So what do you do? You back up with your transit is what you do. So you back up to here. And by the way, you can't notice this distance is not really <laughs> very easy to measure either. Because how you, what are you supposed to do? Dig all these boulders or, you know, until you get... No, that's not going to work either, right? That doesn't work. So this is a real practical thing. This is not some made-up math problem. This is like this is like a real application. This is like a real civil engineering kind of application. So anyway, we're trying to get the height of the cliff. Uh, we can't measure straight up. We don't even we can't even find the bottom of the cliff really. So you back off like you have to. You back off. And what you can do is you can sight to the top of the cliff. So you you aim your transit to the top of the cliff. And you measure this angle, and we get, oh, 50.3 degrees. And then what you do is you back up some more. Now here you're on nice level ground. You can measure this distance, hence the 614, right? So we measure that distance, and then we sight again. How far is it to, I mean, what's the angle to the top of the cliff this time? And it's that 34.5 degrees. So you've got one, two, three pieces of information that are easy to get. This is what you want. Okay, how do we put this information together to get H? And like I say, it's a little bit of a head scratcher, so you have to think about it for a second. Uh, well, we've been trying to use law of sines a lot. Uh, the idea comes in to try to match up the sine of 34 against the H, but then we'd have to match up. Wait a minute now. First of all, you'd have to use. First of all, you don't you don't want to be <laughs> you don't want to be crossing on two different triangles. So if I if I cross, oops, if I cross from the sine 34 to the h, then this is the triangle I'm playing with, right? So what I'd have to do is I'd have to know this. Wait a minute, this I can't I don't know what this is. I can't I don't know what this is. Okay, that's not working so well. I suppose I could. This is a 90. I could do Sokotoa, except I don't know what this is either. So you, you, you kind of start walking around saying, man, there's stuff I don't know. So let's erase some of my purple mess here. Okay, that didn't work as well as we were hoping. What else can we do? Well, looking at the 50.3. Well, this triangle over here is, an, is a right triangle. So if I had this distance here, I could just do Sokotoa. Could Sokotoa 50.3 degrees with the H and the X, right? That would actually be the sine of 50.3 degrees is H over X. Okay, well, can I, X is part of this triangle. Can I look at this triangle now and get my X? That's the real question. And it looks like this might be promising. Take this 35. 4.5 degrees over x, and let me just write that down, sine of 34.5 degrees over x. Now I'd love to use the 614 somehow, which means I need to know this angle. Hmm. 
Can I figure out this angle right here? I'll call that theta. Can I figure out this angle? And yes, you can, and you don't have to do any calculator. Well, you don't have to do anything besides adding and subtracting to figure out that angle. You got any ideas how we could figure out that angle? Look at the entire information in front of you. The breakthrough comes when you realize you got two triangles and you can play with both one at a time, right? So if I look at the triangle on the right here, that one, if this is 50 degrees, then this has to be 90 take away 50.3 degrees. Remember, it's a it's the two acute angles of a right triangle, and over here it's a right triangle. Must add up to 90. So if that's 50.3, this other one must be, what, what would that be? 39.7? Uh, yeah. So that means right in here, you've got 39.7 degrees. Okay. What I really wanted was over here, right? Let me change my colors now. Now think about this angle, the 34.5, and think of the big right triangle all the way around like that. Um, if this is 34.5, then this entire angle here must be 90 take away 34.5, which is what, 55.5? Okay. So that's 55.5. Okay, so if it's 55.5 from here to here, but from here to here is 39.7, you can subtract to get your theta. So I'm going to do this maybe in a different color. So theta is 55.5 take away 39.7. Is that like 15.8? Gonna make sure I do the math right. 39, 49, 54, 55, 55. Yep, yep, yep. So this actually, this theta here, I can now write this down. 15.8 degrees, right there. Now, back to this triangle over here. Remember, we were playing with this triangle. We said that the sine of 34 over x is the same as, and now we can say the sine of 15.8 over. 64. So here I go, we're writing this down. Sine of 15.8 degrees over 614. There's a proportion that you can solve. Dum, 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 dum. So I go 614 times sine 34.5, close parentheses, equals, divide by sine 15.8, close parentheses, equals, and I've got 1277.26, and I'm going to carry some some sig figs for a while because I'm still in the middle of my calculation. 1277.26. Now, how does that help us? Well, think back to the beginning when we first started doing this stuff. At the beginning, we were saying, hey, I could do Sokotoa with the 50.3, the H, and the X. I still don't know the H, but I know the X. So here we go, Sokotoa time. So maybe I'll write that down, Sokotoa. So Sokotoa is still going to be useful, of course. But the law of signs gave us the breakthrough moment. It was we, we couldn't have done this with, well, maybe we could have. But the law of signs sure made this a lot easier. So anyway, the sine of 50.3 degrees equals opposite over hypotenuse. And so the sine... 50.3 degrees is equal to the h over the 1277.26. And remember, this works because I am talking about a right triangle over here, right? That's a 90. I can use Sokotoa on the 90. So let me uh, come back up here. So if you if you basically multiply both sides by the 1277.26, I get 1277.26 times the sine of 50.3 degrees. Bada boom, bada bing, bada bing, bada boom. I've got my H. My H is using one decimal place, 982.7 feet or whatever this is. So that thing, that cliff here that you were trying to measure, it's 982.7 feet tall, assuming this was 614 feet. Now that's useful. That's useful.
Maybe I should edit that out. Anywho, now I want to give you a reason to believe in the law of signs. I don't know about you, but I'm always a little antsy when I'm like using some formula and I really have no idea why it works. <laughs> I'm like, why in the world does that work? I don't know, it just works. Okay, I can use it, I suppose, for now. But I'm still like, why does that work? So I'm going to, this is optional. You don't have to memorize this. This won't be on a test or anything, but hey, come back here, come back here. For those of you who are curious, here's here's a, a reason you can believe in the law of science. What you do is you make a little construction like this. So I've got myself a nice little triangle here, just a general triangle. It's not a right triangle. Now it turns out there's a, you know, the way a lot of these things work when you're trying to prove some math theorem, it's all about trying to make some kind of a construction where you can prove that it works. And this is the magic construction. You make the triangle, and the magic moment comes when you think like this. From this angle, drop a perpendicular right there. Drop a perpendicular right there. Now, how does that help? What I'm going to do is I'm going to call this x for now. And I'm going to solve for x. And I'm going to solve for x use, come on, you, using this triangle over here, and then I'm going to solve for x again, but using this triangle over here. So, using this triangle over here, what do we got here? Well, this is a right triangle. If this is a, this is the sine of a, right? So, Sokotoa type stuff. The sine of angle a is x over b. Cool enough? Cool enough. Now, come over to this triangle. This one over here. This is a right triangle. And uh, if I want to solve for x, okay, your eyeball's over here this time. I want to solve for x. Notice this is also the, this is the sine of b. So the sine of b is equal to x over a. Okay, so that's a b, not a 6. Let's make that clear. So I've got these two formulas here. Now what you do is you try to play with these formulas now. So I'm going to multiply both sides by b and say, oh, that equals x. Over here, I'm going to multiply both sides by a and say, oh, that equals x. Well, if they both equal x, then these things must be the same. b times the sine of a must be the same as a times the sine of b. And then what you do is you divide both sides by a and you divide both sides by b. What happens over here? The b's cancel. You've got sine of a over a. What happens over here? Uh, the a's cancel. And you've got sine of b over b. And so this was just a general triangle that I threw out there. So if this is true for any general triangle I feel like drawing, then it must be true forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. For any triangle, even a right triangle. It's even true for a right triangle. So sine of a over a is equal to sine of b over b is the law of sines. It works like a charm. I love it. I hope you love it too because you can solve everything with it, almost. Actually, there's like two situations you can't solve, and that's why we need the law of cosines in the next lecture, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So.